morning. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the Saturday morning live cast where we yes. round up the week that was at WikiTree. We, we, we have a missing uh, appendage. Um, yes. We're missing Betsy this is, week. What can we say she's doing? I believe she may be climbing Mount Everest. Ooh. What's your guess? What's my guess? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I think she is helping out the Easter Bunny and planning the most optimum route to go through all the Wiki Trier's homes. Oh, well, that was so much better than mine. <laughs> I used to really like you. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. That was so good. Yes. Oh. That's so funny. No. Okay. So she, you, did you see the cheer, the Wiki Tree cheer? I had this. Dream. Yes. Woo. Yeah. Touchdown. <laughs> um, so good morning, everybody. <laughs> and uh, we have lots of people hanging out in the chat so far this morning. Mm -hmm. Did you did you check on that little item? Yes, I did. Had? Yes. And it's and it's correct. And Fe Theodore Lisi is here and she completed the Canada Cross uh what is it called the, it's Canada the trans trail. canada orphan trail the trans canada orphan trail which we have a trans canada trail that goes all the way from the down east which is what mm -hmm. we call the east coast of canada mm -hmm. it goes all the way through and up way up and around it's yeah so yeah <laughs> we're so excited you finished that that's a bit quite a workout so yes. congratulations as was here first off um let's see audrey martin's here Let's see, Christy Miller, the chief family genealogical officer is here. Uh, Doctor Who is drinking out of his, I'll drink some. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming back soon. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, D. Spitzer Carr, Chris Wine, uh, Patricia Jackson, Chris Ferriello, uh, Kathy Bauer is here, Eric v Vavra, Susie Carta, Yoke is here. Hey, Yoke. Uh, D. Spencer Carr. Uh, Crystal J. Uh, let's see, Vicky B Vicky Blanco. All right. Yes. Uh, Day Mellon the first is here. That's up in Wales, right? Up somewhere up in Western Wales. I think so. Yeah. Um, and let's see, and Mary Buchholz from South Dakota. Good morning. Good morning, Greg. Have you are, have you ever been a published author? Author? Uh, yes, <laughs> I have actually. Really. <laughs> Yeah, Where uh, well, that be? in in that in there, also in our an Ontario Math Gazette, which is a Ooh. publication that our math organization puts out. But so, yes, so Greg and I wrote and this little it? article, and if you go to the WikiTree very first index page on WikiTree, you'll see it. And there we are. Greg and I wrote that article. So yeah, we're published. <laughs> I'm also published. I got to show this. Uh, <laughs> in so far. Oh, genetic genealogy, the first 25 years, 1999 to 2024, reflections from DNA leaders and luminaries. That's very cool. Yeah, that's cool. So I'm in that. That's from Diane Salvador. If and you, you talk want about, that, talk, what's do you, that, in that book, do you talk about predictions of where it's going to go in the future? No, I talked about uh, what they asked us to do was talk about our experience when we first discovered genetic genealogy. Mm. So that. I tell the story about why I took my first DNA kit test. Mm. So, um, and there's also, I believe I have that right here. Um, you can see this. If you want to grab that ebook, it's for free. Uh, Diane Southard is the person who put that together. Nice. So uh, you can grab that uh, if you want to. It's free. Um, and so, yeah, published authors. That's the question of the week. Hmm. Uh, question of the week is, uh, and as may be able to may may be able to grab that for you to get you that um, that link. Um, hmm. Have you? Do you have any poets in your family tree? Poets, authors. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. It, I don't think so. I share a birthday with Robert Service, who is a, a famous poet. Canadian poet. That's a cool, that's a cool thing. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, that's the closest I've got. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we don't have a lot of writers. We did have somebody who wrote a family history back in the 1920s, mm. but a lot of the stuff that was in that book has been disproven. Um, mm. But it's still a good book. Like she confused, she confused her great, great grandfather with her great grand, with her grandfather in oh. the book. And I thought, oh, that's, 
that's too bad. It was her grandfather who was the Revolutionary War hero, not mm -hmm. her great grandfather, the guy that we share. So that was an interesting thing to see that she had gotten that wrong. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right. So she's the only one. But we have people here on WikiTree who who have. Um, thank you. Uh, the question of the week. Somebody put up Goethe. Yep. Goethe. Really? Uh, Richard and Emiling. So he he listed a whole bunch of people. Goethe, uh, Karl Hess, Friedrich uh, Hegel, uh, Nicholas van Eyck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he, he listed a lot of people. And okay, so I wanted to check that out. Let's uh, go over here. <laughs> you weren't quite... You didn't think he was actually descended from Goethe? Well, no, I didn't want to check his. I don't want to verify his stuff. But yeah, yeah, that's right. I have read Goethe. I have oh. read Goethe in his original old German, as a matter of fact. Ooh. I have it over there on my shelf. Wow. Um. Yeah. So he is my 18 times cousin, five times removed. If you're... uh, Oh, yay, Vicky's already got her book. Yeah, um, yeah. If you've got... Connections to Goethe, that's great. I just thought it'd be fun to take a look at his profile again because mm -hmm. uh, we had so much fun doing that last week. Yes. Greg liked it during the mutiny. Yeah, it was. Yeah, during the <laughs> mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Goethe was born in Frankfurt am Main, Reichstag, Frankfurt Heilige Romanische Reich. Um, nice. and he is uh died in Weimar, but this is a nice profile, he's notable, so obviously. He has a pretty nice profile, good mm -hmm. picture of him. Um, and it just goes through here and it gives you the Wolfgang van Goethe gilt as einer der wichtigen Dichter und Autoren aller Zeiten. Uh, but we can scroll down here and we can see <laughs> the English version of that. He is considered to be one of the greatest poets and novelists of all time. He truly uh, uh, affected me uh, in mm. his writing. I liked him. Uh, anyway, so he's got a nice, beautiful profile there. And he's got lots of stuff uh, linked to other things, which is great. Uh, it's got the Wikidata stuff. Uh, the second one that we're going to take a look at, let me scroll on over here, is uh, Kirby Drake has Kirby. a link to his great-grandmother, Hazel Livingston, was an author starting in the 20s when it was often illegal for women to do so. So let's see if I've got this yeah. correct. Uh, nope. i got to find where she is. All right, there we go. Hazel Faye Livingston. What a great profile this is. And also, mm -hmm. you know, when somebody posts a profile, you don't know how colorful they really are. They were oh. she was pretty colorful. Um, <laughs> so look at this. Check this out. She's a cousin, of course. Um, but... She was married like five times. Collins, Lane, Hayden, Peace. And um, she's and got one... early life, marriage, children. She's got uh, some uh, Livingston stuff on here, the Livingston Tartan. Mm. Somebody got her birth certificate. They've got some of those uh, either you hate it or you love it tables. Yeah, that's right. On the, on the, but I tell you what, um, getting the Shonda told me how not to put the, the border on there, and I'm very excited about that. I've been mm -hmm. doing that lately, but she's got a, a great picture here. She talks about the marriage and the children, they have that, um, kind of done it, cute little mm -hmm. baby picture. Um, but here, this is my favorite, um, in the whole thing. Uh, Hazel and Leroy fled Chicago to get away from Al Capone. Oh, that's wait, great. wait, that, that's not the worst of it. In return to Montana with their two children, William came with her and is said to have swindled the state of Montana out of its timber. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> he may have um, adopted another pseudonym during this time as he disappears from records. That's she is said to have fled with William as well. So this was a really colorful, colorful person. Oh, that's neat. That's a wow. great uh, profile. Um, and the, the next one I wanted to do, let's see, that's Hazel. Um, I don't know why I'm stuck on that one. Um, <laughs> my 11th great grandfather was a guy named William Shakespeare. Oh. Yeah. Diana Chrisman. That's pretty cool. Mm. Did I have another one? Yeah. Um, and then uh, let's see. Let's see if I can cor correlate. Maybe this is Anne. Oh, 
There's Hemingway. Yeah. Um, William Shakespeare, and then... I didn't realize Shakespeare had kids. But I guess I, he must have. Well, and George Washington didn't. Yeah, see, that's what I'm thinking. Like, there's a lot of famous people that just that don't have kids. Like George Washington didn't, but there's a brand new. Um, uh, I had it on my phone. They did. They dug up his brother's family, not his brother. They were trying to find his brother, and they mm. found all sorts of information through DNA with all of that stuff. And Wiki Trier, Roberta Estes worked on the pedigree collapse for that um, stuff. It's all over the news. So go check out uh, George Washington's stuff. And this one was, yes, me. I published uh, a magazine in, in scholarly, scholarly journals, that from Patty Almond. There are a lot of people who had that listed. Yes, I, mm. I am the author, which is why I asked if you were a <laughs> yeah. published author. Um, but the last one ha I had up was Anne Dudley Broadstreet. She's my fourth cousin, 13 oh, wow. times removed. But she is the earliest known, and I didn't get who posted this, uh, but she is the earliest known female writer in the Americas. Earliest known. I'm sure that some of the oral traditions of some of the indigenous people are really older, but uh, right. she was Anne Bradstreet. She was born Anne Dudley in Far Cotton, Northampton, England in 1612. Wow. So she was in the United States very early. She died in Andover, Essex, Massachusetts, Bay Colony. In 1672, so she survived a lot of stuff. And I don't know, look at the picture that they have from a book. Wow. She does not look happy, but she no. doesn't look sad. She looks quite contemplative in that, that picture. That was exactly the word I was thinking of, contemplative. Contemplative, yeah. Yes. She's got a big old chain of, re uh, chain of keys there. Keys, yeah. So she was, uh, she was, was a, she a chief herself? administrator. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so it was fun. And this is a great profile, another good one. They even give us a little bit of, uh, to my dear loving husband, if ever two were one, then surely we. If ever man were loved by wife, then thee. If ever wife was happy in a man, compare with me, ye yeoman, if you can. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty Jeez. funny. Yeah, the prize I love more than whole mines of gold or all the riches that the East doth hold. So. There you Aww, go. That's very the, nice. That's the question of the week. Wow. All right. So I'm gonna stop my share. Okay. And hand it hand it over to Greg Clark. Yeah. <laughs> Who has to find his cursor? To, there we go. That's the, those I bet the bunny rabbit has it. The bunny rabbit has it. Yes. The Easter bunny stole my cursor. Yes, because uh Easter coming along. Well, ho happy holy Saturday to everyone except for those in Australia, New Zealand, where it's probably already, it might already be Easter Sunday. Um, yes, anyway. it would be. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yes. And for some of us, Holy Week has been a very busy week, but here I am and we're ready to go. So the question of the week is rabbits or the connection of the week is all about rabbits. And the connect, uh, the connector connection challenge is about two rabbits in particular, Mel Blanc and Jennifer Goodwin. Mel Blanc, of course, was the voice of Bugs Bunny. And um, Jennifer Goodwin played Officer Judy Hopps in Zootopia, which I've never actually seen. Have you seen Zootopia? No, I have not. Uh, apparently, it's a series. and uh, But it's all, it's all about, um, I mean, Zootopia. The, the characters are all animals of sorts. And so she is a police officer and assigned to uh investigate different things but anyways there's bugs <laughs> and, and officer hop so now last week during the mutiny <laughs> mags and guests um decided not to use the uh <laughs> the spreadsheet uh i have got the spreadsheet set up um but i thought uh, i heard the complaints and the hardships that I was putting my co-host through for all of this. And you people who join us regularly, you lovely people on YouTube who love to. Uh, oh, and look at there, Sandy. One of the mutineers is in the chat. <laughs> 
uh, you lovely people on YouTube take part and enjoy, I believe, you know, responding to the thing, but um, responding to the thing, <laughs> you know, to the to the challenge and, and letting us know who you're closer to as I pair people up in the profiles. So, but apparently the hosts don't enjoy it. The hosts do find the order. So what morning. I thought is maybe we do some crowdsourcing, and we would let the people in the chat, you know, keep track. And then when it comes time to you know find the scores, I'm sure one of our keen wiki trees will have keep kept can do a little tally and will let us know so that maybe. You don't have Anne, to. Anne says she loves the spreadsheets. Well, come on, Anne. Come on. Anne, way to go, are, Anne. Okay, I, Anne. I think that if we continue to do the spreadsheets with the hosts involved, yes. that the hosts, that we should have a calculator. So, <laughs> Anne, come on. You can be our calculator and come That's in right. and tally all this stuff. That's what I'm thinking. So we need to crowdsource some of the, the calculations. So let's try that. So first of all, so everyone who's in the chat, please let us know. Are you closer to... Mel Blanc or Jennifer Goodwin. So you can either put Blanc or Goodwin. <laughs> Biscuit. Biscuit. Okay. So Mel Blanc, I think we have taught, I'm pretty sure we have gone through Mel Blanc before. I think he's been um, profiled before because I, this is all very familiar to me. Score, he was born on the 30th of May, 1908 in San Francisco, uh, son of Fr Frederick and Eva. Um, and of course, he's most famous as a voice actor and radio personality, best known for his work with Warner Brothers, um, is the Waskly Wabbit, Bugs Bunny, as well. He's also done the voices for Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Tweety Bird, and more. Often referred to as the man of a thousand voices. Um, a teacher influenced his surname spelling, changing, ch changed his name from blank, B-L-A-N-K. See how his father has spelled his last name with a K, changed it to the French Blanc. So that uh, because of a, um, a nasty remark, he said that you'd never amount to anything with a last name like blank. That's a that's a rude thing for a teacher to say to a kid. I would never say, that. you know, the, the teachers were much ruder back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah, I think so. I think sometimes they they believe more in the what's the word? Uh, not harsh. Um, tough love. <laughs> My uh, high school homeroom teacher that I had all four mm -hmm. years of my high school life was a tough love teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, he was a regular on the network show, the Jack Benny show, did lots of stuff. Sadly, he passed away um, from complications from his smoking habit and which resulted in emphysema, which is not a fun way to go in coronary heart disease. But he did live to be 81. So that's pretty good. Um, anyways, well beloved uh, character and characters that he voiced. And the other the other connection challenge is Jennifer Goodwin, who played Officer uh, Judy Hopps in Zootopia. Yes, she's You're my the, closest. She's your closest. So she's one just one closer for me as well. Um, uh, and I must confess, I haven't seen Zootopia yet, but I'm intrigued. So I think I will check that out. She's actually a cousin of mine, a distant one, through a French connection. Um, I wonder if it's the same French connection that Sandy Paddock has. She discovered, I when I rewatched last week, I noticed she discovered she has a French, some French roots there. So that's kind of cool. Um, of course, she's still alive and acting. Um, I saw, uh, the, the part I know about her is the when she played Snow White um, in Once Upon a Time, which I, I enjoyed that series. And turns out she's married to Prince Charming, the person who played Prince Charming from that series was, so that's kind of cool. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, but her profile is very tiny because she is still alive. Um, but there is a link to her IMDb page and also a Wiki Wikipedia page. So you can find out more about her there. So let's see. So we are both close to Jennifer and she is my cousin. Are you cousin to either of these two? Um, I am ninth cousins twice removed to Jennifer. Okay. And then, and then nothing to Melvin Jerome Blanc. Okay. So as in the chat, who has been keeping track? Do, do we know what the score is for? Oh, oh, it looks like someone said, oh no, that's just, they're just giving their own scores. Yeah. Oh yeah. People are, okay. I'm just sharing what everybody said 
Has anyone tallied the number of the scores? <laughs> Anne, Anne, didn't I didn't I hit Anne with that stick? Yeah, Anne. What's the what's the stats, Anne? How do I? Oh, did you put the or did I did not, I didn't re I didn't erase those from last week. Those that's thirteen. That those are last. No, week. we didn't do it last week. Remember, there was a meeting. Oh right, okay. So that's it's a tie. Oh, Aunt Sandy says it's a tie. <laughs> no way. What? <laughs> Okay, so apparently no, no. Everybody is more related to Mel. Uh, I mean, to Jennifer Goodwin. Okay. Uh, both and let's see, Goodwin, both Goodwin, Goodwin, Mel Blanc. There's one. There's one. Um. Goodwin, Goodwin, Mel Blanc. Goodwin. Okay. Mel Blanc. Oh, I should have been keeping track of how many times you said good one. Blanc. <laughs> I've I've heard three blancs so far. Good both. Good one. Mel Blanc. That's it. Good one. Okay. It's not, uh, not too bad, I don't think. Okay. I'm gonna say that it was about five to twelve. I didn't actually I didn't actually count the numbers that you were saying out loud. Sorry. No worries. Okay, there we go. Uh, moving on. The Melanie McComb, we need to add her in there. Melanie, uh, look, 24 degrees from good one for nice. Melanie. Good. Okay. Um, the next pair are two people who played her, um, there we go, their voice, voice act, the uh, authors. What am I saying? Authors. <laughs> Authors of stories with bunnies or rabbits in them. So Dick Bruna um, wrote a story and his character was Miffy. And here's a picture of Miffy, the bunny. Aww. Isn't that sweet? Sweet little bunny. What's his little oh. mouth? Oh, that's his nose. That's his nose. Sorry. Yeah, that's his nose. My little cursor was over top of that. Yeah, that's his nose. And uh, George Richard George Adams is famous because he's the author of Watership Down. And I just did a quick search for Watership Down and you can see all these different um, titles or um, cover pages um, all have pictures of bunnies on it. They're all different. You know, often it seems to, you know, there's usually one image that's always used for a book, but this one has, I guess, they've got lots of different ones. But every one of them, I don't think I've, I don't think I've read Watership Down, have you? I Are did when I was really young. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't. But anyways, so these are both authors. Um, so Hendricus Mag Magdalenus Bruna was born in uh, in Utrecht, Netherlands, Dutch, um, in uh, 1927. And of course, he was a Dutch author and illustrator and a graphic designer who was widely acclaimed for his work as the creator of the popular children's book series Miffy, uh, he started to he started to pursue a career in drawing before his father forced him to attend secondary school. Oh, forced to go to high school, but then he eventually attended an art school in Utrecht, where he started started design and illustration. He worked with a Dutch publishing company, and which was founded by his grandfather, which is very cool, and created cover art for many other books. And then he created Miffy, or I'm not sure how you pronounce that. There's lots of I's and J's. Nintia. Nintia. Um, maybe yolk can help us yeah. with the pronunciation. Nintia is would be my guess. But yolk, please uh, correct me there. A small white rabbit with a simple minimalistic design. So that's what you can see. It's very minimalistic. Um, published in 55, 1955. And the series sold 85 million copies. That's amazing, isn't it? That is amazing. That is wild, yeah. He ran several awards through his life, including, I love this, the Silver Pencil Award. What a great award for an illustrator, eh? And he even received a knighthood from the Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands. Passed away at the age of 89, leaving a legacy of inspiring children's literature that has entertained generations of young readers. Very there is nice. Your there's your um, translation. Nine Okay. Thank you, Yoke. Thank you. 
Okay. Very cool. Um, and on to the English author, uh, Richard George Adams, who was born in 1920, on 9th of May, in Washcommon, Berkshire, England. English novelist best known for the uh, as the author of Watership Down. Other works include Shardick and The Plague Dogs. Neither of those I'd, I'd heard of, but certainly the Watership Down is very popular. Fourth child of a country doctor and his wife. Um, he attended Bradfield College in Berkshire. Uh, he was a, uh, he was commissioned into the army uh, to the Royal Army Service Corps in 1940. He served in Palestine, in Europe, and then the Far East. Returned to Oxford, graduated in 1948. Got married in 1949. Began telling his I love how this the book came about. He began telling his daughters a story about rabbits, and then they urged him to write it down, and then that became Watership Down. Um, it was rejected, sadly, it was rejected seven times, but was finally accepted and was published in 1972, won a Carnegie Medal and the Guardian Children's Fiction Prize. And then he became a member of the Royal Society of Literature and president of the Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, um, recipient of the inaugural Whitchurch Arts Awards and passed away on Christmas Eve, 2016. Aww. Aww, that's neat. I love that origin story about that. Yeah, the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I used to make up stories when our kids were little, and the main character, her, call, her name was Princess Blueberry. <laughs> of course she was. Yes. And her magic power was blue. You know, she could do anything with something that was blue. And <coughs> I put stories down, though, so I'm not going to be a published author in that regard. But <laughs> um, So I did tally these. Oh, thank you. Because so, our, our YouTubers are on mutiny as well, apparently. <laughs> there were both or two. Oh. Bruna had three votes and Adams had 10, 12 votes. Three to 12, did you say? Yep. And okay. there were both, there were two boats. Biscuits. <laughs> okay. And so I am closer to Adams. And who are you closer to? I am closer to Adams as well at 23. And I'm not related to either one of them. No. Yeah. Okay. Adams wins that contest. Moving on to voice actors. Um, and let's see, here we go. So Sam George Edwards and Junius Conyers Matthews. George, so, Sam George Edwards and Junius Conyers Matthews. Yeah. So you put Edwards or Matthews in. Now, do you know offhand who the voice, who they voiced? No. No. Okay. I'll give you the. I'll give you a oh, visual hint. Thumper. Yeah. Thumper. Thumper was Edwards, and Matthews played. I don't know. That's that's Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. <gasps> of course it is. <laughs> Isn't that neat? I think that's cool. I love these. I love these connections. Uh, so Sam George Edwards, born 1915 in Macon, Georgia. It's Macon, right? Like with a hard Macon, C. Macon, yeah. yeah. Macon. Macon. Macon, Georgia. Uh, We're going to have you speak in Appalachian Southern soon. <laughs> <laughs> I might just, no, I I, I should. Not. I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> born, uh, he grew up into the show business family, uh, made his debut on stage when he was just a baby. Um, his mother, the actress Edna Park, was holding him. So does that count, really? I mean, how much acting did he do? But that's okay. We'll we'll give it to him. Uh, part of a traveling medicine show. Those are always fun. The Adventures of Sonny and Buddy. Um, and he supplied voices in several children's productions, including Thumper the Rabbit in the animated Disney film Bambi. Yeah. Then he was drafted into the Army in 1942. Uh, and in most of that tour, tour of duty, he entertained the troops. So um, he left the service, he returned to radio and played one of his most memorable characters, Dexter Franklin, the bumbling teenage boy next door. Um, and he was considered an everyman character actor, played in lots of other shows, Dragnet, Gunsmoke, Mission Impossible, Hello, even in a Hello, Dolly. He also, now this is interesting, one of his regular roles in, from 78 to 83 was on Little House on the Prairie. Huh. He was the town banker. I remember that. Yeah, I remember the show, but I mean, 
I don't remember the banker necessarily, <laughs> but that's who he played. But you can you can sort of see that, you know, in this picture there. Uh, anyways, passed away in 2004 from a heart attack. And then we have Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, Junius Conyers Matthews, um, born 1890 in Carthage, Illinois, United States, um, and passed away at the age of 87 in 1978. American actor and radio performer who became the original voice of a rabbit in Disney's Winnie the Pooh. He also voiced Scotty in 101 Dalmatians. So you remember in that Scotty, I think was one of the ones that helped them as they traveled across England to get home to London. Um, and then Archimedes, the owl in the sword in the stone. It's kind of cool. Excuse me. Um, he got a start on Broadway um, with shows like Young Wisdom, Wisdom Any House, not heard of that one before. There was a silent film called Silent Witness. I guess he probably didn't do any voice acting in that film. <laughs> um, and then a bunch of other things leading up to one of his earliest radio roles was The Tin Woodsman in a radio production of The Wizard of Oz, which is kind of neat. Um, his acting career, just like uh, Edward's uh, career, was halted during the uh, war. He became a private during the US Army uh, in, during World War II. And then he appeared in a few movies after that. Uh, he suffered a stroke and passed away in 1978. So how do our voice actors stack up? You know what? Audrey Martin ha has done the tally. And she said oh. Edwards 1 and Matthews 19. Now, Thank I was you, trying Audrey. To, wait, wait, I was trying to do the tally. I was trying to be a good non-mutinous host. Yes. And <laughs> I got four for Edwards and Ooh. 14 for... Wait, mm. 5, 10, 15, 19, 4. Yeah, so you missed uh, three of the Brunos, or the Edwards guy. So okay. thank you, Audrey. If you're going to do you, it, Audrey. I'll stop. That I will. I'll stop. <laughs> then I get to uh, enjoy the, the morning. Yes, yes. Thank you, Audrey. If you don't mind doing that, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And which one of these are you closer to? I am not closer to either one of them, really. Um, no, oh. Junius Matthews is 17 degrees for me. And he's like, he and Jennifer Goodwin and Sam Edwards are all my closest. Mm. I'm not anywhere near um, Matthews. Um, oh, Edwards. Uh, no, not Matthews. Edwards. Where's the guy? Yeah. So you're closer to Matthews. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Sure. Okay. Audrey said sure. Excellent. Way to go. Okay, the next category, uh, the duel, is between Peter Dinklage and Mortimer Snukowski Prof. Now, am I missing something completely that I don't know what Peter Dinklage did that was a part of a rabbit? I know. I did not know this either. Um, and in fact, looking at his, um, his, his profile on Wikitree does not actually help you. No. figure that out because my favorite doesn't... movie that he's been in is the station agent oh okay it's a indie film i think oh neat i don't think i've seen that one um of course if you look at his picture you'll recognize him most many people recognize him as Tyrion lannister from game of thrones um and he's done lots of other stuff but the reason he's in this um is because he once played the velveteen rabbit on stage no way. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so that's his connection to this. And the the actual the uh, um, stage productions is the category that links these two together because Mortimer um was also was a producer and produced many many shows on stage and television. So he and his brother. So that's the connection. That's how these two are sort of related loosely. So yeah, Peter Dinklage played the Velveteen's rabbit on stage once. Um, but he's more pot, more commonly known uh, for most recently anyway for his Game of Thrones, but he's done lots of other things. Uh, he was born uh, to John Carl Dinklage and his wife Diane in 1969. His father was an insurance salesman, his mother a music teacher. Uh, he was born with achondroplasia, which is a form of dwarf, dwarfism. Um, and he got married in 2005. Their first child was born in 2001. Uh, I did not know, but he was a, he's been a vegetarian since he was 16 years old. Um, so all those scenes where he's eating meat in the Game of Thrones, you know, huge chunks of things. Apparently he faked that. 
Um, varied vo acting career, um, working in film and television, did lots, has done lots of voiceover work for video games and stuff. Living in Oblivion and Station Agent are mentioned. Uh, he earned not seven awards for that sh sh movie. So, yeah, the Station Agent's an, an incredibly good movie. Okay, well, I'll have to add that to my to view list. And then Mortimer Croft or Marty Croft, born in 189, no, born in 18, 1937 in Montreal, um, son of Pinkus Snitkowski and Mary Yolos, um, youngest brother of Sid Croft, and was a producer, writer, and one half of the Croft Brothers production company that concentrated on creating U.S. children's entertainment shows such as Hanna Barbera, Hanna Barbera's Banana Splits, H&R Puff and Stuff. Bugaloo's lots of stuff, Atlanta Loss, Electra Woman, The Dinah Girl, Wonderbug, lots of stuff here. And he received the Lifetime Achievement Emmy Award for National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Nice. Also has an, uh, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Nice. Nice. And he's Canadian. Yeah, I was going to say, does he have a Canadian star up here somewhere? Does he have, is there a Canadian, uh, let's see. I think we should. Is, uh, is there a Canada a, a Canada project? Oh, you mean a, on the Canadian Hall? Yeah, wall. the. That's a good question. We should we should put him up for a posthumous mm -hmm. um, Governor General. Yeah, he passed away just recently, just a few yeah. months ago, November twenty twenty three, from kidney failure, at age eighty six. And let's see, how did we do? Uh, well, let's see. I can tell you that I am closer to. I am. To... Who are you? Close. I'm closer to Marty. Marty Croft. I am furthest from Dinklage, and not related to either one. So Audrey Martin has your numbers here. Thank you, Audrey, for being our our calculator today. Excellent. Uh, drink Dinklage one Croft twenty. Okay. Twenty. Okay. Thank you, Audrey. So far, most most of these have been blowouts, right? Yeah, the they have been. The first, yeah. Okay, next we have the last four are all nicknames. So, um, because they have Bunny as part of their nickname. Oh, fun. Have, yeah, Bunny Adair, who's a... Uh, Herbert. Part, Herbert, yeah, yeah. Herbert, Herbert Arthur Adair, also known as Bunny Adair, is a politician from Australia, born in 1905, Wolfram Camp, Queensland. Um, and the other one is a pro baseball player, Harold Burton, the rabbit Warsler. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. So our politician from down under uh, was born in 1905, a member of the Queensland Legislative Assembly, the son of Cecil and Helen, um, born near Cairns, Qu Queensland. Um, place, of the born, place of birth is from military record, but the same record gives 23rd of August, so different, slightly different uh, uh, in, information there. And then he married in 1928. Uh, this looks like it came from a, uh, a newspaper article. A very pretty wedding was celebrated on Wednesday, February 13th at St. Monica's Church, Cairns, when Gladys, the only daughter... <laughs> I love how they wrote, wrote those uh, articles back then, you know. Very nice. Um, Served in the Australian Army in World War II. Served as a member of the Queen, Queensland State Electorate from 53 to 69, 1953 to 1969, and then passed away on uh, 21st of October, 1994 in Cairns. And buried in Cairns Cemetery. And then we have our baseball player, Harold Burton Worsler. Nice photo of him with his baseball uniform. Uh, born 1903, New Berlin, Ohio, United States. Professional baseball infielder in the Major League Baseball. Primarily played shortstop and second base for the Boston Red Sox from 30 to 33. Philadelphia Athletics, the Boston Bees, and the Chicago Cubs in 1940. Born on September 13th, he married in 1921 and then passed away at the age of 60 in 1964. <laughs> um... Sandy is hopping away. <laughs> yeah, she's she's all in it. She's That's all so in. cool. <laughs> okay, I'm closer to Harold, and who are you closer to? I am closest to Harold as well, and not related to either one. No, doesn't look like I'm related to either one. 
either. And how are our YouTubers? Uh, waiting for Audrey to give us our t tally there. Mm -hmm. Come on, Audrey. I was thinking we should make a special button, a, a special template for, for our calculators. Yes, yes. Okay, she says one, Adair 1 and Warstler 14. Wow. These are lopsided. <laughs> That's are. okay, though. Um, and then the last pair is Bunny De, uh, Bunny DeBarge and Bunny Mellon. Uh, so Bunny DeBarge is a singer, American soul singer, songwriter, and the only female sibling of the Motown family group, DeBarge. Oh, wow. Now, now I'm, I must confess, I, I'm not familiar with the Motown group, DeBarge. Yeah. Um, but uh, are you? I am a little bit familiar because we, my brother played like Motown music. Oh, alive. okay. He was a slap. Well, he is a slap bassman. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. He, he played lots of funk. Funk. Neat. Yeah. So her, her given name was Etterline, which is also the given name of her mother, Etterline Louise. Um, but she go, goes by Bunny. And I'm guessing they put Bunny there as on, on the, in the in the uh what do you call it <laughs> on the edit screen you know for first name so that's why she's listed as bunny here um it's gone by bunny most of her life apparently eldest of 10 children wow grew up singing gospel music in the bethel pentecostal church in grand rapids michigan um her uncle was the pastor and another uncle was the head of the choir so definitely a family of musicians um then she and her uh, her husband, Tony, and two of her brothers initially sang together on a gospel circuit before the brothers joined with the group Switch. And she and some of her other brothers followed to Los Angeles and created the group DeBarge, which also signed well, Motown. Uh, one brother decided to go solo, and she, Bunny released a solo album, and other siblings followed similar uh, pursuits. She completed rehab and authored a second book, and stated in Wikipedia that she now lives in Michigan and is a grandmother to 15. Wow. Um, and our other, our final profile of the connection, uh, the theme this week is Rachel Lowe Mellon, Lambert Mellon, born Lambert. She's my closest. Is she? Okay. And she's also eighth cousin. Ah. Oh, she's a cousin of mine too. They're 22nd cousin. A lot more distant. Um, Rachel Bunny Mellon was an American horticulturist, gardener, and philanthropist and art collector. But this is the cool thing. She also designed and planted a number of significant gardens, including the White House Rose Garden, <gasps> at the request of her friend, Jacqueline Kennedy. Nice. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. These are really, these cool little facts. Like, the, I did enjoy it, Sandy all the little trivia that you added last week about the the profile people. Um, that was very cool. So this is really neat when the when the trivia is embedded right in the profile, so I don't have to go searching for it. <laughs> Born on the 9th of August, 1910, and daughter of Gerard uh, Barnes Lambert, the, who invented the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Cool. And her grandfather invented Listerine. Wow, this, this woman's just full of cool you got the the morning take care of the mouth situation all, under, in the face, <laughs> all under in one control. thing yes you got your morning routine all there and then you spend the afternoon just enjoying yourself in the rose garden <laughs> um spent some of her childhood at carter hall which was a mansion in virginia shenandoah valley um and then uh so bunny lambert first married in uh, 1932 and then married again in 1948 uh, to a philanthropist and art collector and horse breeder, all melon. She was entire. She was an entirely self-taught botanist, which is very cool. Um, she assembled one of the largest collections of rare horticultural books in her personal library, and established the Oak Spring Garden Foundation to keep her vast library preserved and accessible. And passed away on St. Patrick's Day, 2014. At the age of 103. Isn't that wild? 103. Woo! Very cool. Very cool. So, how do we do? So, we are both cousins to... 
Rachel. Bunny Hill. Rachel. Yeah. And she's also my closest. Is she your closest as well? She is. She's yeah. an eighth cousin. Ah, right. Yes, she did. But I okay. I and what's the final score from our YouTubers? Uh, we're waiting on that. Uh, mm -hmm. We've still got another score coming in. There we go. Yeah. From uh, I do want to point out that Day Melon the first is yes. uh, related to Melon. Oh, nice. So, and that's apropos. Day Melon and Melon. Yep. <laughs> that's excellent. Yep. Uh. Um. Where are where yet? <laughs> oh, there it is up there. There we go. One, uh, DeBarge one and Melon 20. Okay. Yeah, I like this having help, Audrey. Woo, this is woo, great, woo. Audrey. Thank you. You're going to have to add your picture to our, our crew. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we can put up a little icon that just has a calculator. <laughs> Calculations by Audrey. Rob, well, I'll put this right here by Audrey Martin. There we go. It's official. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Now, do you want to do the pictures or should I do? Sure. I'll go, yeah, you I'll go ahead. Jump in and do the pictures. That way your little voice can have a rest. Yeah, that's your right. Little voice. Um, <clears throat> 12 month of photos. So, uh, again, um, the 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 hostess with the most is Betsy Co is off calculating the Easter Bunny's route <laughs> to all the wiki trees. That, that was such a go good one. Um, so I'm gonna do the the little guys doing the oars here. So this photo is from um, anonymous B's grandfather, uh, second from the right. So over here, the furry fella. He's quite furry. Check oh. that out. <laughs> um, he was an avid swimmer and continued to compete in competitions into his 80s. That's crazy cool. But he was obviously not a swimmer here. He was an oarman. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, then um, we have my when my mother was young, she used to go to on vacation with her sister's family. My mother was a lot younger than her siblings. They usually went camping in France, five people and all gear in and on the car, uh, Beverly Hillbilly style. Uh, biscuit. Uh, now, what does this have to do with sports themes? Since my uncle used to be a cyclist when he was younger, the itinerary was often adjusted so they could get a glimpse of the Tour de France and the Dutch riders who were fairly successful in the mid 50s. So this is their family on their way, or is it this family? I guess it's this family. Hmm. And there we go. There's the Tour de France. How, how cool is that, Yoke? That's that weird. is so cool. Coming around the bend. That would be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I also don't, I mean, they didn't have anything up to hold the spectators back. That's crazy. So now on down from Yoke's wonderful post to Eric Vavra. Somebody's throwing out the first pitch. Dor Dorothea Vavra. Are you in here? There, you're in here, aren't you? Uh, at 1:04 p.m. Central Daylight Time on May the 29th, 1991, my grandmother Dorothea Vavra took to the Wrigley Field mound to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. That is crazy. Uh, That's no very, fire. very cool. Uh, acted as her pitching coach to the Cubs front office, providing delivery advice and words of encouragement. Then the diehard Cubs fan was escorted onto the field by her son as the pitcher took her to the mound. Conditions were 84 degrees, cloudy with no precipitation and an eight mile per hour wind from right to left. Now, I'm sure that they did some calculations like Audrey's done for us. <laughs> okay, The announced attendance was 31,359 fans. Uh, they watched the 77-year-old used her softball skills to perform a triple windmill windup and deliver an underhand pitch arching to home plate. Wow. Cubs rookie catcher Eric Pappas received the throw on a short bounce her performance received loud cheers from the crowd. How exciting is that? How exciting that they got this great picture, too. Oh, that and is what, neat. 
the, the, she doesn't include why. What? Why did she get asked to do this? Oh. Yeah, there's usually some connection, right? Yeah. What? What is? What? Why? Come on, Eric. Okay, so that's the that's uh, very... photo. I'll send it back over to my friend Greg. Okay. So, um, the other the other thing that Betsy does so well, and uh, we're just gonna I'm just stumbling around here, is the profiles of the week or the ancestors of the month. And there are two. Well, there is one that was that was. Um, has been added. Christine Miller says on Saturday, March 30th, my grandma Jean would have been 106 years old. Um, wait a second, let me roll that up a bit. Um, would have been 106 years old. I was so fortunate to have known her. Grandma endured a childhood of upheaval and despite her circumstances, was able to create an amazing life with her husband and two daughters. She had an amazing work ethic leading to creating a mail sorting company during World War II, cool is that, with two other military wives. She also started raising her own chickens and garden during the war. Because of these two things, she was able to give her ration stamps to other families who are more in need. That's very generous. Uh, she's my role model. I'm so thankful God gave her to me. Aww. Well written there, Christine. Very nice. And so here is a pic. This is, yes, this is her. Uh, Dulcie R Regina, Grandma Jean, right? Regina Detweiler Shaver. Born 30th of March, 1918, Pratt, Kansas. Passed away 1st of February, 2000, age 81, Phoenix, Arizona. So you can see that she came from a large family and siblings all together. She was fourth on the list. Um, and then the profile goes into more detail about, uh, she was believed that Regina was her first name, but it wasn't until later in life when she needed a birth certificate that she discovered Dulcie was in fact her first name. Isn't that, that often happens, doesn't it? People going That's by so their- sweet. Yeah, <laughs> sweet, Dulcie, yeah, means sweet. Yeah, Dulce. Um, uh, then it, it goes into more details about her life and uh, growing up and whatnot. So lovely, lovely profile. There's a lovely picture over there, Grandma Jean. So very nice. Nice. I'm so glad you got to to, to meet her and uh, she's your role model. Now, that is cool. just before, like half an hour before we began, there was another entry. Um, and this is by our very own award-winning uh, Orphan Trail completing Anne Fiordalisi. <laughs> Wiki tree! Yay, Wiki tree for the win! Her <laughs> connection to March is my best friend, Barb. She was born on the 25th of March, 1952, and died on the 1st of November, 2010, from cancer. We were friends from the first to the end of her beautiful life. We enjoyed square dancing, gambling, and knitting together. And before she died, she went on a seven-day Alaskan cruise. This was one of our bucket list items. We had a fantastic time. I really miss her this month. Oh, that's sweet. Very that is nice. sweet. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you, Anne, for sharing that. Now, Betsy always gives a tip of the week. So I'm going to give a little mini tip of the week. <laughs> Do you have a tip of the week, too? I don't. <laughs> so my tip is for maximum fun on Wikitree, one of the things you can do is join one of our challenges. <gasps> and the Connectathon is coming up. So if you haven't already um, registered for the Connectathon, there's still time. It happens on uh, not the first weekend, but the second weekend of April, um, I believe, 14, 15, 16, I think, or those dates. There it is. Oh, you <laughs> You <laughs> Mags took over and is sharing. And there you go. If you go to GDG, it's one of the top pin posts. There you go. Um, it runs from Friday the 12th to 12th. Monday the uh, 15th. 15th. I knew it was the second weekend. I just, the dates were just <laughs> blocking my bit. So yes, sign up. And the way the sign up, um, they did this in January, but they're doing it again this time. Uh, you can sign up for Canada. I'm Team Canada this year or for this, this round. Um, uh on that post there will be there's an answer for each team and you just have to scroll down find the team that you want to join and then hit the comment button so if you want to be part of the appalachia roots 
um, and enjoy biscuits all through the weekend, click comment on that button right there. Or scroll down to the Canada Team Canada one and hit the comment button there or any of the other ones. Yeah, Anyways. and, 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 and as, um, are you going to mention what as sent us? Yes. Okay. So here is the list of, these are the teams that have under 10 people signed up so far. Now, you remember the last couple things, they've, they've sort of broken the teams up into brackets based on team sizes. So you're sort of come on the score, on the team score sheet, you're sort of comparing, you're competing or your scores are with teams that have similar numbers. Um, so you can certainly have teams with low, low numbers of, of participants, but if you have to, if you're joining a team or if you're signing up for the connect on, you're not sure who you want to join, consider maybe joining one of these teams that have lower numbers and helping them out. Banyan tree. Uh, oh, where's the Banyan tree from? I can't remember. So, some of the, many of these are geographical ones, but so you don't have to live or necessarily work on records from those areas. But um, these are teams that have low numbers so far. So consider joining one of these teams if you ha don't have another preference. The other, go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to switch gears to a, to the link, link builders. Were you, Here you gonna go. Say <laughs> I'm, getting to, I'm getting ready to put that up for you. Okay, so the link builders challenge is a challenge that's gone this all this month, and they want to by the end of the month have two thousand links. So as of uh, right now, we have eighteen. Oh, two more links from the since the beginning. We people have added two more links. So one thousand eight hundred eighty-seven is their score so far this month. And what this challenge is, is to add links to Wikitree from other sites. Um, and so there's lots of work that needs to be done between now and tomorrow. Yes. If it goes to the end of March, that would be tomorrow at midnight. So, so yeah, but we're really close. It was just um, 113 away. Yeah. So, yeah, there you so, go. If you uh, are interested in doing that, then hop on and help them out. Um, so we're really close to that. And that's all I have to say about that because joining joining these little challenges, it's a lot of fun. You get to work with other people and it is fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it's a lot of patting on the back because every time we do one of these challenges, we make Wiki Tree healthier. So that's exactly it. Yeah. <clears throat> we want to have a healthy tree out in our front yard mm -hmm. in Appalachia. Sitting on our porch, <laughs> And our banjos. So, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh -oh. uh, have you registered for the Connectathon and then um, Rabbit's Connection Combat? We mm -hmm. did that today. Mm -hmm. AON always has up a great bit of information on what's happening around Wikitree. And then the challenge is join us in researching Melly Alexander, the DNA chef. Yes. <clears throat> so, that stuff is great. There's also. Uh, the social media links and the ambassadors uh, uh, project. And as my tip of the week, again, I'm going to show you how to find it. So go over <laughs> here, find, you're going to scroll down to projects <clears throat> and then we'll scroll down to uh, the functional projects. Click on the ambassadors. We'll zoom us down to the ambassadors project. We'll bring that up. And we will go down. There's a little bar down here. Click on that social media bar. It'll bring us up to this great page. So we want to go to week of Sunday, March the 31st. So that's the stuff that's happening this coming week. Mm -hmm. uh, the cemetery spotlight is Warren Hill Cemetery in Harar, Harar Province. Mm. <clears throat> And mm -hmm. let's see, see, we don't know the question of the week yet, but the one name study is Turner. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a misattributed uh, parenthood that Ooh. became a Turner. Uh, and the person who found out that said, I don't like that name. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's just like the Turners. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, it was awful. Oh, wow. um, yeah, but it was also a misattributed parent. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, one place st study is uh, Mazaraz Al Alentio. Uh, apologize for butchering that. Wikitree Plus on yes. Wednesday. Ask Alesh. 
Ask a Lash event showcase. Well, you can ask a Lash, but the person doing the asking is Greg. <laughs> that's right. So, I'll ask him for you. You'll, yeah. So Friday night bingo is coming up, and that's with Sandy Panic. There we go. And then uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Spotlight and meet our members. And then you'll get us again that Saturday morning. You may yeah. not have me next Saturday where, you, where I'm trying to figure that out. I have to travel. And um, if I can make it, I will try and make it. If not, you guys will not miss me. Because you'll, <laughs> yes, go. you'll have Betsy going. Greg, at least there won't be a mutiny when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> no, probably not. Well, that is the week that is, that was on Wikitree. And there's so much more stuff going on. We're so glad that you joined us. And we're so glad that we could be here to play and hang out with you because it's it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ash was just saying, give us a thumbs up. We'll take it. You'll take it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.